You know, Mr. Sams, I've been thinking some more about um, becoming a motivational speaker. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, I've been thinking about, you know, leveraging my intellectual capital um, so I could make a game plan. Oh, okay. What's the game plan going to lead to? Well, I want to empower uh, people to make a paradigm shift so they can think outside the box. Mm. I want to position um, them so that they can be customer-centered, customer-directed, and, and of course it has to be cost-neutral. Of course, yes. And it's got to be all about their best practice. Oh, absolutely, the best practice. Best practices seem to work best for me. Mm. So I want to knowledge, uh, knowledge management, um, and uh, there's a certain market segment I'm after. Oh, yeah? yeah. yeah. Any, more, any more buzzwords you want to include in your, in your new, new career here? Well, I want to push the envelope. Do you? Okay. Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> because if we're outside the box, we definitely need to be pushing that envelope. The envelope is very important. <laughs> and, um, you know, uh, so I can synergize yes. with my mm, customers. Yes, synergy, very important. With extension of my students, they're like my customers. So yeah. I can, mm -hmm. we, we, we can synergistically, synergistically reach them mm -hmm. and form a strategic alliance with our kids. Yeah, yeah. Sounds and, about right. Um, and that way it's a win-win situation. Absolutely. So yeah. So that's what we're going to do right now is we're okay. going to work on that today and all right. um, uh, create solutions to their problems. Okay. Because chemistry is all about solutions. It is about solutions. And so today, strategically inter alliancing, a sol I'm not as good as this. You're not very good at that, Mr. Sims. No. You, you are not, not a motivational speaker. I'm not a motivational speaker. speaker. No. I'm thinking you shouldn't be the motivational speaker. Yeah, I, I, there's there's something else out there for me. I'm sure. Hey guys, what we want to talk <laughs> about. <laughs> is um, this whole delta H thing. What's up with delta H? Well, delta H can be calculated, if you recall, I'm going to flip back to a slide we watched or looked at um, some time ago. And if you recall this slide, we had four ways to calculate delta H. One was with calorimetry, which we did last time, mm -hmm. in 6.1. And then today we want to talk about Hess's Law, um, version one, I like to call it. It's really all one law. We'll talk about that. Yeah. And Hess's law, version two. There aren't really two versions. It's just a, a two applications of the same law. But since the problems are so different, yeah. I think it's good to just kind of break them down. And this whole thing called bond energy um, is going to be saved for a later, later chapter. This is the last um, podcast in unit or chapter six. Or just it is. Two. It's really pretty simple. We've chapter. actualized our potential with this. Yeah. Indeed. Thing. Yeah. This, something. Yeah. I'm still you're, not we're getting there, bud. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll keep trying. Synergy. So how do you find delta H? Versus version one, I like to call the adding reactions method. Okay, so how do you find delta H by adding reactions? Well, we need to know something very important first. That all elements in their standard state, for example, um, say hydrogen. Mm -hmm. And when I say their standard state, what do I mean by that, Mr. Sam? Um, that is uh, in their elemental state, or uh, like if it's uh, gas at room temperature, it's going to be a gas in yeah. its standard state. So what we mean by that is that if I have an element like hydrogen, when you find hydrogen by itself, it's always H2, but it would also be a gas, basically kind of at room temperatures, 25 right. Celsius mm -hmm. in one atmosphere. But if I have, say, iron, in its standard state, it would be a solid. Right. Basically, look on the periodic tables on our walls. The black elements are solids, the red ones are gases, and the blue ones are liquids. And for example, mercury, um, um, one of only two elements that are a liquid at standard state. The state, of course, is solid here, mm -hmm. liquid and gas, but they would also be the element in their standard Correct. state. And I do believe this is a one atmosphere, too. If I'm and at one second. atmosphere, 25 Celsius in one atmosphere, yeah, yeah it is. Which is, that, by the way, that is something that's kind of weird. We should say this. This assumes 25 degrees Celsius in one atmosphere. Now, these are like standard conditions. It's basically what a laboratory would be like at sea level. But the problem with it being at standard conditions, at least I've always been confused, of course, that we've learned from our gas law. STP. Which is standard temperature and pressure, and the standard temperature there is zero Celsius. Zero Celsius, Celsius. yeah, it's And weird. the reality, the reason this is, is because there are people who are... Um, um, they are thermodynamicists, for lack of a better term. They are study years of heat, and they decided that they wanted their standard temperature to be 25 instead of zero degrees Celsius. But you know that the ideal gas law used to have 25 degrees as its standard temperature about 30, 40 years ago. Mm. And the, uh, the gas law chemists decided they preferred zero degrees Celsius, and the thermodynamicists said, no, eh, not going to do we it. We like 25. We're sticking. We reject your paradigm shift. That's what they did. They yes. were rejecting that paradigm <laughs> shift, and so it did not work. It was out not a win-win situation. Situation. No, they just left arguing with each other. Yeah. So, and that is never good to just leave arguing with people. All right, I'm trying to find the correct slide. Here we are. So the point here is that the value of delta H for any element in a standard state, it's a very simple number zero. to remember. It is a big fat zero, and that's being kilojoules per mole. That's something you need to know because oftentimes on the AP exam, they will write down a value, uh, uh, some numbers, and they assume that you know the value of delta H is the big fat zero kilojoules per mole. 
nothing, not a Zippo. Dippo. Dippo? Dippo. Okay, there we go. Dippo is the word, isn't it? Okay, so we can write the formation of several compounds from their elements. This is called the heat of formation. Yeah. Heat of formation. If I can print it. The heat of formation, and it is symbolized by... Delta H with a little F. Doesn't it got a little zero on it, Mr. Uh, it does have a zero. Yeah, that means it's at the and standard actually, let's kind of let's sort of formalize this. The yeah. F means formation, and the degree sign it often took like degree sign. This means under standard conditions. Mm -hmm. Now again, that's 25 Celsius and one atmosphere. One atmosphere. Okay, so now we're going to do some examples here of heats of formation. So let's say I want to form a particular compound. Can you think of an example compound, Mr. Sams? Um, any old compound? Any old compound. Um, sodium chloride. Sodium chloride. Now, sodium chloride is made of sodium and chloride. So what we do is we're going to form sodium chloride. Now, sodium chloride in its standard state is a solid in room temperature, 25 mm -hmm. Celsius, one atmosphere. That's table salt. Yep. And so the formation of this would take in a solid, because sodium is a solid at standard temperature, and it would react with chlorine. Now, you don't write Cl. No, nope. right? Cl2, Cl2, because chlorine is a diatomic a molecule. Gas. Now, an important thing is, is how would you balance this equation? Tricky thing on this, ladies and gentlemen, is you would actually put one half here, because typically you only want to make one mole of the product. Of the product. And so you do use, oftentimes, fractions to make these. So this is considered the heat of formation reaction for sodium chloride, right. or delta H F zero, and then parentheses in ACL. Yeah, one thing on the AP test, if you see some of these delta H problems, always look to see if the reaction is forming from its elements. That should be a key to you, because you might look at it and go, wait, I don't have enough information. But if it's forming from its elements, yeah. the delta H formation is going to be zero. This for is both zero, of those. and this is zero, but the value for NaCl is not equal to zero. No, because it's not an element. It's not an element. So this will be a different number, and right. there's tables of yeah. these particular things. Let's take a little bit more complex one. Let's take glucose, C6. H12O6. Okay. And so to form glucose, which is a solid, that's sugar, by the way, or one variety of sugar, anyways. And that's a solid. You know sugar is a solid. That's formed from three elements. So it would be carbon, carbon. solid, plus hydrogen. hydrogen gas, H2, of course, the diatomic mm -hmm. nature, plus oxygen gas. Yes. Right. And then to balance this, you would need three oxygens, six, six hydrogens, yeah, and six. one carbon. Mm, six carbons. Six carbons. I knew that. I was testing you. I know. Um, and so this, of course, would be zero. We we're trying to find the values of delta H, zero, zero. And this would be some number of kilojoules per mole. I don't know what it would be. I could look it up in the table. Yep. But we're not going to do that right now. Just, not yet. But you're going to have some practice writing these reactions. It's elemental. <laughs> <laughs> Elementary. <laughs> Elementary. <laughs> elemental. <laughs> well, uh, Boo. All right. That was a week. Okay. Yeah. yeah it was. We should try to actualize some potential. Yes, okay. And you some. know what? Guess what we just did? The F stands for, and we've already said what oh, this yeah. is. Formation. Yeah, formation, and the degree stands for 25 degrees Celsius mm -hmm. in one atmosphere. I'm getting ahead of myself. I have an amazing PowerPoint. I didn't even know I had it. I would have said that. Okay. Hey, mm. examples, heats of formation reactions. I think we've already done that, Mr. Sam. I think so. Yeah, that was yep. just... That We're was just like, getting ahead of the game here. I'm just so good at that. Actually, that's right uh, here. Here would be an example of one of them heats of formation reactions. So I guess we can skip that. Okay. Yep. Okay. Now, here are just basically a set of rules that you've typed into your uh, your notes there. Yep. Um, how do you find the delta H from reactions? First of all, you must add the source reactions. I'll kind of explain this. Yep. Such that they cancel out. And when you multiply source reaction, the value of delta H is multiplied by the same factor. When you reverse a reaction, the sign of delta H is switched. And sometimes it's easier to just multiply the main reaction by a factor so you can get rid of all your fractions. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, it becomes a mess. And source reaction, guys, those are given to you. Yes, yeah, so. source reaction. So here's an example that's in your handout. Mm -hmm. All right, I want to find the enthalpy. Enthalpy, another word for? Delta H. That's yeah, the same thing. Or, yeah. All right, so what I want to do is I want to count the enthalpy of combustion for the combustion of carbon to carbon monoxide. So that reaction is given right here. And I'm trying to find delta H. I think I'm going to have a blank screen. It might be easier to see this. So if I have carbon plus... Plus O2. Half O2? No, uh, just O2. Plus O2. Oh, wait, for the overall reaction? Yeah, Sorry, yes, half O2. Makes... CO. CO. And I want to find delta H for this reaction. So this is the... Let's call it the target reaction. Yeah. It's what you're trying to hit. Not, not this kind of a target, right? Target star? No. Okay. No. 
to know. Okay, here are your source reactions, or the reactions you're going to solve this problem from. So reaction number one. You have carbon plus O2 makes CO2, and the delta H value is negative 393.5. Guys, and this is all in your handout. Yeah. Okay, and the next one is uh, carbon monoxide plus half an O2 makes CO2. And uh, I should just note that they're all the gases. Oh, I'm sorry, negative 283.0. All right, they're all gases, so we won't put that in there. So here's the way I solve these problems. I want to produce carbon monoxide from carbon and oxygen. Yep. Now, what I like to do is I like to find, uh, usually I, if there's one product, I'm going to look at that product and then look at my source reactions here and here and find my carbon monoxide. Hey, it's a number two. It's in experiment, or uh, pardon me, source reaction number two. So However, it it's on the wrong side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this reaction around. And by the way, also note, I need one carbon monoxide, mm -hmm. and I already have one. If I needed two, I would double it. Right. So carbon monoxide... Plus, plus half an O2. one half O2. I kind of leave my oxygens for last. Yep. Otherwise, it creates a mess. And so now I'm going to have, as I'm going to write this, I'm going to put negative 283 because you well, see. Well, it was already negative. So I'm going to make negative, negative two. Negative, negative. That's yes. what I meant to say. So it's going to be uh, what you do is since I flip this reaction around, then what I have to do is I have to change the sign right. of the value of delta H. Because as it's, as it's printed there, it's, e it's exothermic, but when you flip it, the energy is going to go the other direction, so okay. it's going to be endothermic. Perfect. Okay, and the next one, I'm, again, I'm going to leave my oxygens for last and hope that it kind of falls into place, is I have carbon on the left side. So mm -hmm. I'm going to look down here in, in reaction, source reaction number one, and I see carbon on the right side. I need one carbon here. I have one carbon. So I'm going to just recopy this reaction. So C plus O2 make CO2. And since I did not change that value at all, I didn't switch it around or mm -hmm. double it or whatever, it'll be negative 393.5. Now what I do is I see if these two reactions that I've done, flip the one and left the other one the same, if they add up to this target reaction mm -hmm. up here at the top. Now one thing I quickly can notice is I have CO2 on this side and CO2 on this side. So it's one and one. They cancel. Yeah. Just like when you balance redox equations, anything that's the same on the left and the right side, you can cancel. And the other thing I see that's similar is I have O2 on this side and a half O2 on this side, but a half is smaller than one, mm -hmm. so this one becomes one and this one becomes one, one half. half. So then I bring down my carbon and I bring down my one half O2 and then I make carbon monoxide. Okay. And hey, that looks like your target this reaction. This is the target reaction. So, of course, to find the value, which is the point, I will take these two numbers and I will add them. Negative 393.5 plus negative, actually it's positive. Right. You'll add, because this is an, a negative of a oh, negative, yeah. right? So it'll be plus, plus 283. 83. So it'll be equal to delta H for this reaction will be negative 110.5. 110.5, and that's kilojoules. Per mole. You see, I just add them up, and it's a very simple thing. Well, you basically have to know what you're going to double, etc. Yeah. You know, got another example where we will have to do some doubling and yeah, changing the coefficients. Yeah, this next example um, will show this as well. Wow, so that's a big. It's got lots of problems, but mess. I want to find this particular one right, right that's here. That's the target reaction, the the last one in this case. So here's the target reaction. I think I won't recopy these. Um, I think I can do it without that. I see I have N2O gas. So I'm going to look up here and see if I see any N2O. Now right it's there. in two places. So I have source reaction one here, source reaction two, and source reaction three. Now the, I see the N2O in reaction three, and it is on the appropriate side, and it is the appropriate um, uh, value, right? So I'm going to start. What do you mean by value? Or sort, uh, the coefficient is. Cor oh no, it's no, not. No, two eight. Oh, this is two. Okay, so I'm wrong. So I'm going to have to do what to that, Mr. Singh? I, I would divide all the coefficients by two. So on source reaction three, I'm going to do this. I'm going to take source reaction three and I'm going to cut it in half. So instead of writing two n two o, I'm going to write n two o, or one if you care. All right, and that's going to go to one n two plus one half O2. Now what do I do with my number? Well, the number was negative 163.2. I'm going to have to write one half right here. Right. I do the numbers at the end. So. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's that. So now I, so I just basically, if you, I like to think of it this way. Check, I've solved for the N2O. I think the NO2, if I'm not mistaken on this problem, is a little bit more complex. The NO2 is, it in two places? is only